one day we were just we were, we went for a hike and we went up to the top of Flagstaff Mountain and that's when I realized that the 40th parallel well, I didn't realize it was the 40th parallel but I saw Baseline Road which ran east um, as far as uh, the eye could see and I asked my roommate Eric um, at the time he was an engineering major actually um, what why it was called Baseline Road and he said oh that's the 40th parallel it's the baseline for surveying the land west of the Missouri River. Uh, the 40th parallel runs from uh, New Jersey, the New Jersey shore, through southern Pennsylvania, um, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri. It is the border of Kansas, Nebraska, so that's the baseline. And then it goes through Colorado, Utah, Nevada, and northern California, south of Eureka. So it's basically, I, I photographed the view from the intersection of each degree of latitude and longitude. So once I get to this spot, then I have about a 20 square foot area where, in which to work. So anywhere within that 20 square feet, my GPS will give um, all zeros for latitude and longitude. When I get there, I just, I look around and you know, it takes me anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes, depending on what's there. And, um, and I just try to make a, beautiful picture. I try to make the best picture I possibly can at, at that time and um, in that space. Um, some of the reason I was interested in um, in this idea of mapping or place is it comes from my father um, being a civil engineer, a civil engineer and um, and primarily a, a draftsman and a, and a um, and a surveyor. <clears throat> uh, when he was in college he took a couple surveying courses and, and that Watching him do that and him teaching me about what that meant really got me interested in in um, that idea of place. My dad explained uh, what latitude and longitude were at that point. Um, so I'm five years old. And I'm still not really understanding it. And he said, "Well, it's like it's like in Star Trek. It's when you know Kirk says uh, lock onto these coordinates. It's a it's a, an imaginary grid of lines around a planet that you use to find out where you are." And that made sense to me. Suddenly I kind of understood in a way how that worked, you know, through Star Trek, oddly enough. I didn't really understand, even though I had started it in 98 and had really conceived of it in, I think, 92, this project, the 40th Parallel, I hadn't really thought about really why it was I was making the pictures. Um, until I had a, my first show of it, the first exhibition of the work, which was in 2005 um, in the South End at, uh, at the Laconia Gallery. My friend David had been um, in charge of the gallery, and, and of course then, you know, he was, he's always been a big supporter, so he, he, we made a bunch of prints and we put them up and he's like, you have to write a statement, and, and I had not even thought about writing a statement for it, really. I mean, I'd written a couple, but never really thought about it, so I really started thinking about why that, through that process that is to start to figure out why I really why it was so interesting to me why I wanted to do it why um, why was it taking so long all those kind of things at the same time that that's happening I'm getting this show my father was diagnosed with cancer and so on top of kind of the weight of having the first exhibition in the project not even at being anywhere done I think I had maybe 10 pictures um, uh, I had to think, I started really, I, my dad's life really started to play a role and I started to realize just how important his influence on me was in regards to my understanding of place and needing to know where I was um, and him helping me understand that. The project changed a bit over time, I mean I changed a lot, you know, working for so long, worked, I worked on, I started making pictures like I said in, in 1998, I've been making pictures ever since and so you know the pictures change because I change and I think all pictures change and if you're not changing if you're not growing and changing as an artist then kind of why are you doing it um, you know my work has changed a lot since I started doing this and in fact I don't use this format anymore my my work is really really different now um, but um, to be able to go back and and and, and you know fi really finish I, I actually can't believe I'm still finished I, 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 it's amazing to me um, that it's done can't believe it. The difference between um, my survey of the 40th parallel and the King's surveys of the 40th parallel um, with, with O'Sullivan but also with a couple of other photographers and he did many he did many surveys in the West. So some of the difference and some of the some of the things that I want to talk about or I try I, I want my work to speak to 
um, is not so much like, I don't really, I'm not interested in a re-photographic situation or finding where they were, um, mostly because they weren't actually on the, for, on the 40th parallel as a line. They were photographing the 40th parallel, so everything between the 40th parallel and 41 north, which is a pretty wide swath of land that goes through the west. Um, they started in California and they worked their way east across um, Nevada and Utah and up into Wyoming. What I'm trying to talk about in my work and what I want people to kind of come up, come up away with in a way is, is it being a 21st century kind of look at a survey. So it's very, and this goes back to the idea of GPS and this kind of exacting location that I, that, uh, that I employ, um, that you know, our lives are like that. Everything is kind of precise. Everything is kind of well known. We, um, it's, it's, it's down to, you know, down to seconds and, and minutes or milliseconds, like things are timed, things are placed precisely and so so this idea that we're kind of going across at every degree and making these kind of you know um, you know almost almost banal pictures of, of a place a random place almost a random place um, that that um, that it kind of speaks to I don't know, how we are how we live in the world now or right, everything is kind of known already but we can still explore these these ideas, you know, because I mean, they happen. These pictures happen in the back of a in a farmer's field. They they really are kind of random in some ways, even though it's all been mapped and placed and things are based off of it. It's still, you know, I still end up in some farmer's field in 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 Missouri, and he doesn't even know that the that those two lines meet on his land, and doesn't really understand why I want to take a picture out there by his fishing pond. The criticism is often like, well, where are the people? And you know, the thing is about I think that because there isn't a place in the United States that hasn't been visited by somebody, not to mention the fact that I'm there, so there's one person there anyway making a picture, um, that you know most of it is farmland, most of it is things that are touched. It's we've 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 altered the landscape. I mean, you know, the United States is starting to you know be like England and Europe, where it's you know there's there's hundreds of years of working the land that have shaped the land, and I think I want you know I want to talk about that. I mean, sometimes yes you know 123 west which is in mendocino national forest um nobody's been there i don't think i mean you know there's just trees and yes it's it's wilderness for all intents and purposes but but there's still like it's a national forest which means somebody's taking care of the land there somebody's looking at it so there's always people i think there they're always implied in landscape you can't have landscape and this is you know pretty basic but you can't have landscape without people because people define landscape otherwise we just have land So I'm really excited. So after 14 years, I'm, you know, finally the, the work's done. Well, the work's done. And I'll be having a show in the fall, um, September 6th through October 12th at Gallery K Office in the South End. It's going to be the whole gallery. I'm really excited. It's the first time I'm going to have the whole gallery. I'm very excited about that. Um, but it's going to be 50, all 52 pictures. It's going to be pretty tight. Um, and they're going to be smallish to fit them all in, but I think um, it's going to be really great. I'm really looking forward to being able to stand in that space and see them all um, and have a beer. That's uh, I'm really excited about that. I, I won't really feel like it's done until then. People keep asking, you know, how does it feel to be done? And, you know, I have a lot of work to do. And so this is going to be, that's going to be when I'm done, when they're all on the wall and I can have a beer. That, that, that'll be perfect. <laughs>